Today we're going to talk about the legend, the icon, the one and only. Two five five bag, the reissue. Let me just take all of these giblets out, all of the protection out, because we are going on a historic journey for today, okay? Here we have the 255 reissue in the, what would be comparable to the Jumbo, if it were a Timeless Classic double flap. Now, this one comes in the Ruthenium hardware. By the way, I've unboxed this bag, gosh, 2015, 2016. So I've had it quite a while now. It's been a moment. It's been a moment. This bag has been all around the world with me and I love it to bits. Now, for those of you who follow me on my channel since a while now, you probably followed all my, you know, adventures and journeys with this bag. Uh, since I purchased this one, I've also purchased a classic size, just one size smaller with gold hardware. And of course, I also have the mini 255 reissue. I have it, I have the 255 in a camera bag shape, in a belt bag shape, in a clutch shape. I mean, the 255 is my favorite Chanel bag of all time. But there's a lot of new people that discover the Fashion Bunker and my channel. And so you might have not seen my older videos about this bag. And I have noticed lately that quite a few people are talking about information about the 255 bag that is not really correct. So let's dive into specific details of the 255 bag, Secrets Revealed. First, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Push the join button next to the subscription button. Become a member today and gain access to extra perks. You can also join me on Patreon, Super Dacob, all spelled together there for extra perks. This video is being filmed live in front of a live virtual audience. I live stream several times a week, so hi to my co-chatters in the live chats. Also, be sure to follow me on my Chanel fan Instagram account, Dacob CC, all spelled together, where you get to hear and read and see special information about my collection and photos that I take of of Chanel collections in general. So, first big mistake people make. Little rhyme. We open the bag and we go inside to reveal the mysteries. Now, the zipper pocket. How many times are you going to see a video where people buy this bag or the Timeless Classic for that matter, same thing when it comes to these pockets. And they're gonna try to go into the pocket this way. It doesn't work. The pocket opens upwards. And sec so, first mistake. Second mistake, they're gonna tell you, this is where Coco Chanel kept her secret love letters. Wrong. First, let's talk about why the pocket is up here and not down there. Well, because this is reminiscent of a jockey bag. It's a blend between male horse jockeys and postmen. They would carry messenger bags on their shoulders. Now, I'm not going to flip the flap backwards completely because I don't want to risk damaging the leather, but technically you're supposed to flip this flap completely backwards like messenger bags work for postmen then what happens? Miraculously, this pocket that you think is so bizarre that it goes upwards, well, once you bend it downwards, the pocket is exactly where it's supposed to be. Just like in old school messenger bags. That's what the pocket is there for. However, wanna be, wanna get your brains blown for a second here? Guess what? When Coco Chanel first designed the 255 bag, there was no pocket here. Uh -uh. No, there was no pocket at all. So how could this pocket have been a pocket for her love letters? This is Chanel Brand Marketing 101, inventing mythologies and myths for you to think, oh my God, I really want to buy the bag now because Coco kept her love letters there. We're going to get to how the original 255 bag looked like in just a second, but let's debunk another myth. 
How many times have we seen on social media people saying, Oh my God, I just bought a Timeless Classic. I just bought a 255. I've been using it only a couple of days and oh, woe is me, woe is me. This little stitch right here and this little stitch right there. There's one right here and there's one right there. These two stitches keep the back panel attached to the front here. Where is it? Right up here and right up here. And people start wearing their 255 or their reissue bag and then they start crying because sooner than later that stitch pops. And then Obviously, each and every one of these people, when they're reviewing their bag before the stitch pops, they talk about how amazing it is to have a secret compartment that they can use for their mobile devices in this bag. And then inevitably, they're going to show you that secret compartment being not in here, but rather when you close this flap, they're going to show you this secret compartment back here. Now I'm going to take this platinum ring off that is really dangerous and it's going to scratch up the leather. So they go back in here, in here, and then they're going to like dig in there and they're going to say like, look, it's such an amazing compartment. It's a great pocket. Have you watched my videos? Had you watched them years ago? I've done these videos like a decade ago you would not have broken your bag. Why am I saying this? Because this, it looks like a pocket, but it's not a functional pocket. You should never use this. This is an integral part of the structure of the bag. You're not supposed to put anything in there. It's not a pocket. And by putting stuff in there, you're stressing. What are you stressing? You're stressing exactly this stitch right here and this one right there. Because you keep pulling the bag apart. And of course those stitches are gonna pop. They're gonna break. And then you're gonna go to Chanel acting like you did nothing wrong, when in that, indeed you did. You're not supposed to use that fold. Don't even call it a pocket because if you call it a pocket, you're gonna think you can use it as a pocket. It's not a pocket. It's a fold that you're not supposed to use, okay? Now, let's debunk some more myths, shall we? Let's flip this flap open. Now, I have done this mistake as well in the past. You open it up and there's this whole beautiful story about the interior of the bag. The burgundy interior. Now, contrary to popular belief, this is not connected to Coco's outfit when she was a student with the nuns. Technically, what most Chanel employees are going to tell you is that this was the color of the nuns' outfits that the nuns wore in Aubazine when Coco Chanel was an orphan in the Aubazine orphanage. And so that's why the interior of the bag reflects her past. Now, it's a beautiful story. I believe that story. I decide to believe that story. I decide to believe the myth of that story. However, be warned, Coco Chanel herself kept reinventing her past. She even said it in an interview once. She said, and I quote, Sometimes even I lose myself within the labyrinth of my own myth that she created herself. So it's okay. Coco would reinvent parts of her life according to how it would suit her in the moment in which she was telling those parts of her life. So I am fine with Chanel brand marketing reinventing the interior of the bag and telling us so emotional. This was the color of the nuns. Now, outfits in Aubazine. This may be true. You see, after all, this is not the 255 bag. This is the 255 reissue bag. So, Karl Lagerfeld or whoever for him within the design team and the marketing team when they were deciding how to revamp this bag, they have made some alterations as opposed to the original 255 bag. In fact, the original 255 bag wasn't even in leather. It was in jersey. And also, 
The original 255 bag did not have this fold on the side like an envelope. This is something that Carl decided to add to the bag because the myth of Karl Lagerfeld redesigning the 255 bag wants it that he found one of these bags in a drawer somewhere archived and it was kind of folded flat and squished and he liked this fold, this squishy fold. And so he, you know, when he revisioned the 255 bag, he decided that, hey, when we go in production with this bag, I want you to do an extra step of work and fold it and create this fold. And a lot of people, again, unboxing their bags are going to, you know, on their YouTube channels are going to say, I don't know why it's folded. Is this a flaw? No, it's not a flaw. It actually costs more to do this because it's an extra step and you got to be very precise and do it exactly precisely to fold it. It makes it way more sleek and elegant. And a lot of people, the first thing they do when they get these bags is open this up and they stuff the bags full because they're like, yeah, I, I, I don't like the fold. I'm like, are you crazy? <laughs> first of all, the fold makes the bag fall much closer to the body, super elegant. And also, it is reinforced. This panel, this exterior and bottom panel of the bag is much stronger and sturdier than the back panel and the front panels are. These are softer than the side panels. So they're meant to maintain this shape. However, they're also meant to lose the shape. The longer you wear the bag, the more it loosens up and the more it's just going to open up on its own. Okay, that's going to happen with time. Let it happen with time. Don't force it ahead of time. It's way more elegant this way anyway, like an envelope. No other bag in the world has this shape with that kind of droopy little bottom there. It's so adorable. It's unique to the 255 reissue. But like I said, since brand marketing is involved, the 255 reissue also got a revamped interior. And the revamped interior includes the burgundy interior. Now, the Nanze d'Aubazine might have worn burgundy, and it is a beautiful story to add to this reissue bag and say, look, we've done this to mimic the nuns and the heritage of Coco Chanel and yada yada. But somewhere down the line, I guess brand marketing shifted from we have done this to Coco did this. Hmm. That's where I have an issue with, because... As I love the story and the poetry behind the nuns wearing this colorway, hence the new bag having this interior, I don't like when you put words in a woman's mouth that she never really said. Allegedly. Of course, everything I say in this video is for entertainment purposes only. Everything's alleged, not rooted in truths or facts, just my opinion. Now, the contrasting colorway inside this bag being slightly lighter than black, because let's face it, it didn't have to be burgundy. It could have been another light color. However, another one of the reasons why it is a different color than black, as Chanel Marketing stated in the past, is because once you look into the bag, there's more light in there. If it were completely colored in black on the inside, you would kind of be looking inside a black hole. You wouldn't be able to see much anyway. So having a lighter color allows you to easily access the bag visually once you open it and see whatever is inside better than as if better than if the bag were completely black inside. I agree with that. That makes sense. The older models of the 255 reissue, like mine, well, older models, I mean, it's not that old, like 2016, 2015, were still done to perfection, meaning that this particular stitch that a lot of people break because they misuse the bag, and we've talked about this in other videos of mine in the 255 bag, uh, the 255 reissue exposed video. Go check that one out. I explain how the stitch works. It's a vertical stitch. And then by hand, once the vertical stitch is done by hand, the artisan has to go in, because you can't do this with a machine, and by hand does the horizontal stitch to surround the vertical stitch. Now, check out the newer versions of the Chanel reissue and of the Chanel Timeless Classic. The ones that cost $10,000 plus now that Chanel is increasing their prices, but lowering their quality, allegedly. Check out the stitch. You're not going to find the horizontal stitch that has to be done by hand. No. You're just going to find the vertical stitch because it's easier to make. Saves time and money. Mm. But we know, right? We know. So we know. Well, this is one of those bags that still has both the vertical and horizontal stitches. Now, as for the gorgeous interior, 
interesting how they have maintained the double flap, which is something Coco invented. Why did she invent this? Well, she invented it because opening the bag, there's still some intimacy there. Nobody else sees what's going on. You turn it to yourself and then you can kind of look inside and protect yourself more. That's kind of the idea. But there's more. The original bag did not have this zipper. The original bag also had a bigger second flap. The original bag also guaranteed something special. This flap had a mirror right here. It was a bit longer and it was in Jersey and there was a mirror sewn in right here so that you could actually do this. Take your lippy, take it out, fold this down. Lip mirror is right here. The bag is helping you reapply your blush, lippy, whatever you need to do because the mirror is right here. Then you lift it again, you put back your lippy into your lipstick compartment or wherever you want to, and you're good to go. Now, as for the interior, hmm, you see a lot of people are gonna tell you, oh, the burgundy interior with the nuns, so romantic. Yeah, it's a cute story, but it's not a true story. Because you see, the first 255 bag did not have a burgundy interior. No. Coco did not really enjoy reliving in her mind the past of spending all those years in Obazine as an orphan, abandoned by her father after her mother passed away. Why would she dedicate that part of her history, the color of the nun's outfits, to the interior of a bag that she would be using on a daily basis. Yeah, it's poetic, but it's not true. Why am I saying this? Well, because burgundy wasn't Chanel's favorite color. Do you guys know her favorite colors? Two, her most favorite and beloved colors. They were, by the way, incredible colors. I adore them to bits as well. Tyrian pink and Tyrian red. In fact, the first 255 bag was not lined in leather. It wasn't even made of leather. The first 255 bag was made in Jersey. It was lined in Gros Grand on the interior, and the Gros Grand was silk or satin, and guess what the color was? It was not burgundy. It was Tyrian pink or Tyrian red. She did both versions. And this chain, which is quite similar to the chain of the first 255 bag, but still different, this chain actually had an extra piece of jersey attached to the strap, to the chain, to make it more comfortable for the wearer's shoulder. The metal chains were made so that Coco would solve the issue of a lot of thieves rushing around Paris back in the 50s on their little mopeds, on their bicycles with scissors, ladies carrying their bags that had leather straps or woven straps, and they would just cut off the strap and pull and yank the bag and rush off with the bag. Well, Coco said, you know what? No, let's do a metal chain. They can't cut the bag anymore. Very practical solution to a very insipid problem back in 1955 when the bag was first released. But let me show, you might say, Jacob, you're just blabbering on. No, okay, here we have one of the many books that I have on Chanel. And by the way, I would recommend you to check out my video on the top five books to read on Coco Chanel next, after you finished watching this one. But let me cue in two pictures from one of these books. Let me move to the side here with my chair and let me cue in the pictures for you. So this is Coco's own 255 bag. After she passed away, this bag landed in Gabrielle Laparnasse uh, collection. She was Coco's niece also called Gabrielle. She was her niece. So, uh, Gabrielle Labruni Palace inherited Coco's own bag. Now, check out the jersey exterior. Check out that strap that is sewn to the chain to make the chain more comfortable. And also check out how deep this particular version of the 255 bag was. 
It literally goes all the way down, doesn't it? Quite different to this. Wouldn't you say? Now let me show you the interior of the bag. The second picture, you get to see, look at this beauty. Look at this beauty. This is the Tyrian red version of the interior of the bag in Gros Grand Tyrian red, but there are also versions of this bag in Tyrian pink interior. Now, let's compare it to this color. You see what I mean? Have nothing to do with each other. So it's totally two different worlds. Two different worlds. Coco loved life, color, zesty, saturated tones to contrast that demure black exterior. This was the interior of her bag, not this. When you lift this flap, as you can see also, it's, it's kind of quite longer than, than this one is. There's a mirror on the other side. In some cases, in some cases, there's also a mirror on the exterior flap sewn underneath the second flap, which is like right there, right? So you will find some bags that have a mirror here, but usually the mirror is right here. And that... It's just a bit of secrets of the 255 Chanel bag and its reissue. Of course, there's more information. There's more, there's more details we can talk about. Like, for example, the fact that Chanel, you know, modern day, modern day Chanel, uh, the brand added a little Chanel logo right here. They spelled out Chanel underneath the lock. Teeny tiny, very subdued. The original did not have any logo on the uh, exterior hardware. Absolutely no logo visible. You just had the double C on the inside. Also interesting to note that back in the day, the double Cs were inverted. So you would have, you see how this double C, this C, how this C here overlaps this C at the top? Well, in the past, this C would overlap this C. They changed that at some point in time and so made it a little bit more difficult to authenticate certain bags because the older models had the inverted C. So people are going to be like, oh my god, I got a, I got a fake vintage. Not necessarily. Not necessarily because they were inverted at some point in time. So that's also something to, to note about this bag. Um, I'm telling you guys, the 255 is a mysterious bag. There's mystery surrounding its heritage. There's mystery surrounding its inception, its creation. And there's also a lot of mystery surrounding what Carl intended with this bag back in 2005 when the bag celebrated its 50th anniversary. In fact, the addition from the, two, from the 2005 collection has inside of the bag, here and here, the date kind of etched into the leather, like 1955-2005. It was kind of the re-edition edition 50 years later. I wonder what Chanel will do a hundred years from the inception of it, because Carl was a big fan of the 255 bag. Virginie doesn't seem to be. But Carl would, you know, deliver new versions of the 255 bag every season. He would deliver so many beautiful iterations, new reinventions of the 255 bag, while Virginie's kind of suffocating it. Like, there's almost hardly anything coming out with the 255 bag since she uh, became artistic director of Chanel. She just doesn't seem to care. Um, so, you guys, I hope you've enjoyed this tiny little excursion just to make very clear and correct the errors that are circulating out there. You know, and for me, I've done a video like this already like six, seven years ago. But since I notice more and more people discovering my channel, kind of coming to my channel, commenting on my channel, saying wrong things about the 255 bag, I thought to myself, let me redo the video, add some more information because, uh, you know, as time progresses, I learn more and more mysteries and secrets about this bag as well. So let's do an updated version of the video on the 255 bag. And I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, I love sharing this information with you guys. And uh, watch this video. You know, 
share it with, uh, with the ones you love, because otherwise uh, th these misinformations just keep circulating. And uh, it's a pity. As poetic as the Burgundy story is, it's just not really true. Because that was not Coco's first 255 bag. And she wouldn't have personally thought to implement the nuns into her own creation from an orphanage which she could not wait to leave. <laughs> you see what I mean? I love the idea of it, and I believe the idea, but it's not a fact. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. My lovely 255 reissue and I wish you a wonderful day, evening, wherever you may be in this world. Thumb up this video if you liked it, and subscribe. Bye. Mwah.